This is a future dock that's able to change shape with the waves. It's one of many innovative dock designs that have been created. Let's take a look at the top 15 most incredible docks. Number 15, Temporary Dock. While most docks are, of course, permanent, sometimes all that's needed is a temporary structure. This can be ideal for seasonal water sports, delivering building materials, to remove coastal regions, or even for military campaigns. There's a wide variety of options depending on the load the dock needs to be able to hold and how stable it needs to be. But the main principle is that it can be constructed from individual pieces that are connected together, and can be virtually as long as you want. They aren't necessarily as stable as those that are made from concrete and drilled into the seabed, and if a storm moves in, they will continually move over the waves. During times like these, temporary docks can feel much more like a ride at an amusement park than something designed to moor boats against. But there's no doubt that anyone who watches this video will want to actually be there to try it out for themselves. Number 14. Umlanga Pier Umlanga Pier, which stretches out more than 260 feet into the ocean from the South African city of Durban, was opened in 2007 and is regarded by many as being the most beautiful pier in the world. It has a functional purpose as it extends an underground culvert that channels excess stormwater from the land into the ocean, but it's the unique whalebone design that's made it such a popular attraction for visitors. Surrounded by pristine beaches, the nearby Umlanga Lighthouse, and beautiful azure-colored water, this is the definition of paradise, and you can quite easily sit here and watch the world go by for hours on end. It's designed so people can go there no matter how high the tide is, and by using the latest lighting technology, the pier truly comes into its own at nighttime. Number 13. Port Miami If you've ever been on a cruise around the Caribbean, the chances are that you would have made a stop at one of the docks of Port Miami. It's the largest passenger port in the world, and one of the biggest cargo ports in the U.S., and the scale of the site is unbelievable. It's located at the mouth of the Miami River and has eight main passenger terminals that are designed to accommodate the largest cruise ships in operation. Just one of them, Terminal A, covers an area of 170,000 square feet, and there are plans to build others of a similar size. Port Miami is so big that it's responsible for employing 176,000 people, as well as supporting hundreds of thousands of jobs in the surrounding area and sees 4.33 million passengers and 7.42 million tons of cargo passing through each year. It's estimated that the port generates $43 billion for the state of Florida annually, making it one of the most important seaports anywhere in the world. Number 12. South End Pier South End on Sea is a town on the southeastern coast of the UK, and it's one of the most popular seaside locations in the country. While it's known for its beaches, arcades, and fresh seafood, the thing that makes it stand out above the rest is its pier, which is the longest pleasure pier in the world. The reason why the structure was needed is because the water doesn't get very deep near the town, and boats weren't able to get very close, even at high tide. The pier therefore stretches 1.34 miles into the Thames estuary, which means boats can dock whenever they need to. Made of wood and iron, the pier has a pavilion with an open sun deck, restaurants, and entertainment facilities. And before you worry that you'll have to walk out all the way to enjoy what's on offer, it even has a railway to take people to the end. Number 11. Port of Shanghai, China After originally opening in 1842 to enable international trade, the Port of Shanghai has continually expanded and is now the largest port in the world. On one side is the Yangshan Deep Sea Port that serves vessels that have traveled from the South China Sea into Hangzhou Bay while there are two other ports on the Hangpu and Yangtze rivers that makes us an integral cargo hub for the whole of China. In 2019, 43.3 million 20-foot-long containers passed through the port of Shanghai, most of which were destined for other countries. Virtually every product that's exported by sea from Shanghai goes through there, and its presence has led to a huge developments all around and some of the densest factory construction anywhere on the planet. Number 10. St. Petersburg Pier Also known as St. Pete Pier, St. Petersburg Pier is a pleasure pier in the Floridian town of St. Petersburg that stretches out into Tampa Bay. It's actually been the site of a number of different structures over the years and has only recently been completely rebuilt. The most recent one that was open was known for its five-story inverted pyramid-style building at the end, a design that was completed in 1970 and done in a way to protect as much of the view of Tampa Bay from the mainland as possible. 
It remained controversial, however, and was demolished in 2013 after falling into a state of poor repair, and a new pier was built known as Pier Park. Instead of featuring a building, the idea is that it will give locals and visitors an open space from where they can enjoy their surroundings and ever-changing art exhibits, and everything was set for a grand opening in May of 2020. Unfortunately, because of restrictions on public gatherings in force at the time, the opening was delayed, and it's currently planned to be revealed to the public later in the year. Number 9. Bustleton Jetty First opened in 1865, Bustleton Jetty, which is in the city of Bustleton in Western Australia, has been continually extended since then and is now the longest wooden pier in the Southern Hemisphere. It has proved to be an incredibly resilient structure, and despite being hit by a cyclone in 1978 and several fires, it's still structurally sound. Towards the farthest reach, 6,040 feet into the ocean, is an underwater observatory that opened in 2003 and is one of only six natural aquariums in the world. This has made the jetty one of the most popular tourist destinations in the region, and there's a railway line that takes visitors along the stretch of the structure to the end. As well as being able to accommodate 40 people at a time in the observation chamber, the facility is used as a scientific monitoring station because of its unparalleled views across the surrounding reef through the 11 viewing windows. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Royal Albert Dock, Liverpool The Royal Albert Dock in Liverpool, England was opened in 1846 and was one of the first complexes in the country to be built solely of iron, brick, and stone without the use of wood. It soon became a hub of trade for the region and allowed for ships to dock alongside warehouses so goods could be transferred directly off them into storage, or vice versa. As the dock is fully enclosed, it was so secure that it was used for the transport and storage of high-value items such as brandy, cotton, and tobacco, and started generating vast profits that were reinvested to install the world's first hydraulic cranes just two years after it had opened. During the Second World War, the dock became the base of operations for the British Navy. But in the following years, due to the need for deeper ports, trade ships failed to return. More recently, it has been redeveloped into a tourist attraction, with more than 4 million visitors each year. There's a large shopping area, hotels, and museums, each of which are housed within the original structure and form a part of the city's UNESCO World Heritage Maritime Mercantile City. Number 7. Progreso Pier The stunning pier in the Mexican city of Progreso is, at just over four miles, the longest pier in the world. The reason why this was necessary is that the Yucatan coast is quite shallow, and to be able to serve large container ships, a dock was needed that stretches out into the depths of the Gulf of Mexico. It was first opened in 1941, and was the first structure in the world that was made from concrete and nickel containing stainless steel reinforcements. This meant that it's been able to withstand harsh conditions for decades with no signs of deterioration, and it was so effective that the decision was made to extend it to its current length in 1988. Passengers from cruise ships disembark at the far end and are transported to shore on a shuttle service, while cargo is lifted into the port facility before being processed and loaded onto trucks. It's an ingenious design and solution to connecting the region with ocean transport, and has made the city one of the most important hubs in the area. Aerial images of the pier are simply stunning and show how shallow the water is closer to shore, as well as the effect that the presence of the structure has had on the distribution of the sand on the seabed. Number 6. The Grand Bayou Lake House When you think of a dock, you usually imagine a structure that's been designed for boats to moor up against. But if you live in a coastal community where flat land comes at a premium, you might consider building one for a completely different purpose. The Grand Bayou Reservoir is a lake in Louisiana with a stunning island at the center. But when a family built a home there, they had to come up with a solution to make it easy to reach. On one side, there's a custom-made bridge to allow vehicles access. But with such hilly terrain and so many trees, there was no room to build a landing strip for a plane access. Instead, they built a jetty into the water, and it's perfect for using with their seaplane. It can, of course, be used for pleasure craft, too. But its main purpose is to provide a quick and easy means of access to the remote property for the owners and visitors alike. Number 5. Castrop Sea Bath Coastal towns around the world try to find something unique that they can build to make them stand out from the rest. But possibly, the most unusual of all is the sea bath that's been built into the Castrop suburb of Copenhagen, Denmark. Made from azobe wood, 
visitors walk along a pier to the circular structure which gradually rises above the water and ends with a 16-foot high diving platform. It has a huge wooden deck where people can lay out in the sun, changing facilities, and showers, as well as a companion structure on land. As part of the development, the entire beach was cleaned and reshaped to produce a place of calm and relaxation for anyone who needs it. Entry into the sea bath is free, and it's open at all times, meaning you'll see people taking their early morning swims, but also those prefer a dip by moonlight. When it's dark, the structure is lit up by large lights that reflect off the water and the wooden paneling which means that you see it from across the other side of the Ursuden Strait. Number 4. Dry Dock 12 Before a ship can enter the water, workers have to be certain that the hull is absolutely watertight. In the early days of seafaring, it was possible to build a frame on struts on land before sliding it into sea, but these days, the requirements for such huge vessels means that an alternative method is needed, a dry dock. Essentially, it's a construction yard next to the ocean with gates that prevent water from getting in until the boat that being built is seaworthy. But as you can imagine, to build the biggest warships and cruise liners, you need a huge dry dock. And one of the largest in the world is in Virginia, and is called Dry Dock 12. To build it took a mammoth undertaking, at 2,173 feet long and 250 feet wide. 120 acres of land had to be dredged and reclaimed to create it. The walls are lined with pressure-treated concrete cylinder piles to withstand the water's pressure when it's full. And the floor was designed with an active pressure release system. The gates allow for partial or full flooding of the basin, giving the engineers the ability to test how watertight a hull under construction is without risking it being damaged. As well as being used to build boats from scratch, it's a vital facility for the repair of ships too. And since it was open, has been used to overhaul and construct countless large vessels, such as aircraft carriers, submarines, cruise liners, ultra-large crude carriers, and offshore tankers. Number 3. Santa Monica Pier If you've ever been to Santa Monica, California, the chances are that you've been tempted by the lights of the city's pier, which has been developed into a world-famous entertainment destination. The pier is actually made up of two conjoined piers that were originally owned by different people. The longer municipal pier was built to carry sewage pipes out to sea, and was opened in 1909 while the shorter Newcomb Pier was built as a pleasure pier and opened in 1916. Today, it has a hippodrome building that contains an original 1920s carousel with 44 hand-carved horses, an amusement park called Pacific Park that has one of the world's largest solar-powered Ferris wheels that illuminates the night sky, a Santa Monica Pier aquarium, and a number of restaurants, stores, an arcade, and entertainers. It's without a doubt one of the most recognizable structures on the Californian shoreline and is a focal point of local tourism. If it looks familiar, but you've never been, that's because it's been featured in countless movies and TV shows over the years, including Iron Man and Forrest Gump, and has been destroyed a number of times in disaster movies like 2012 and Pacific Rim Uprising. Number 2. Naval Station Norfolk Naval Station Norfolk in Norfolk, Virginia is the largest naval base in the world, covering 4 miles of coastline with more than 11 miles of piers and wharves, you can't quite grasp how huge it is, even if you're there in person. It houses the largest concentration of Navy vessels anywhere on Earth, with at least 75 ships, 134 aircraft, and 11 hangars on the airfield that adjoins it. In an average year, there are at least 3,100 ship movements where they either dock or depart, and amazingly, more than 100,000 flight operations, which is the equivalent to one every six minutes. The site was first used for naval operations in 1915 as the headquarters of the 5th Naval District, but the onset of the First World War led to a bill being passed that bought the land and started developing it into a permanent base. After the fighting ended, Naval Station Norfolk went into a reduced operating mode, but by the start of the Second World War, it received a huge amount of funding to expand its capabilities. Since then, it's been the main base of the Atlantic Fleet, as well as hosting the headquarters of several naval organizations, such as the NCIS, Naval Reserve Force, and the Navy Warfare Development Command, and even played a role in the space race as being a place where the ships involved in recovering spacecraft were controlled from. Number 1. Los Muertos Pier Puerto Vallarta is a city on the Pacific coast of western Mexico and is unlike other places around the world with a pier. The one here has a rather unusual backstory. The first one was built in the 1960s, not for trade or tourism, but because of the movie Night of the Iguana was being filmed nearby, 
and the production needed a place to make it easier to transport the cinematography equipment. This ramshackle pier was made from wood, but remained in use by locals long after the movie wrapped. By the 1990s, it was no longer fit for purpose and was replaced by a concrete pier with help from local government and the residents themselves. While this did the job it was intended for and allowed fishermen to trade ships to dock, it wasn't exactly the most beautiful thing to look at, and almost immediately plans were being designed on the next replacement. In 2010, the current Los Muertos Pier began construction, and it was opened within three years, stretching 320 feet into the ocean and designed to look like a ship's sail. It provides more than 2,000 square feet of space for pedestrian pathways, seating, and a waterfront promenade. It's functional, too, with room on the landing dock for six boats, giving local water taxis, fishing charters, and private hires the ideal place to pick up visitors before taking them to a nearby private beach or out to sea. Subscribe to Top 5s for more and check out some of our other popular videos.